measurement of correlation function. Uh, in real life, it's not possible to measure the, the true exact correlation because of the huge number of samples that we have and the randomness nature of, of the process. So what do we do? We're going to assume ergodicity and pick sample and use the available time to evaluate the correlation in time. Now, assuming ergodicity uh, will require a proof, but what we will do, we'll use just the physical sense, like the example we give that a one sample, one human is representative in terms of temperature, one healthy human is representative of all other human or healthy humans in terms of temperature. That's a good example of ergodicity. But saying that, uh, for example, the weight of one sample is a good example for the ergodicity will not be true. Because the weight of one student or one human does not reflect the weight of others. Now, assuming uh, we're also going, if, if we want to do cross correlation, we're going to assume that if we want to measure cross correlation, we'll assume that we have joint ergodic processes. And of course, this assumption of being joint ergodic uh, guarantees that this process is going to be stationary. Now, here is the block diagram where, where, what we're going to do. Uh, Basically, the correlation is done uh, at this block where we multiply the two uh, a signal and a time shifted version of that, shifted by tau, the amount of time where we want to find the correlation. So we'll, be keep, we'll keep changing tau and measure the correlation uh, at different values of tau. Here we take two samples, multiply and uh, integrate. So we get the correlation at the output. So basically, we can assume that the, the experiment start at t1 or to make things simple we can assume that the starting time equal to zero which means that the output will be um, the correlation after waiting for 2t of period of time that will be that will give you an idea about the cross correlation uh, at tau if you want a different values of tau this will give you just one number for different values of tau we change the delay here and we repeat the evaluation the same process, the same block diagram which is used for cross-correlation can be used to measure uh, the correlation. So what we're going to do if you want the if you want the autocorrelation, we'll take one branch, you cancel x for example, and you take y, y, or you cancel y and take x, x. So we feed the same input to the two branches and we get the autocorrelation. Now, now let's do an example. Uh, I have uh, reproduced the figure on the side to show you that we are going to use the same figure to do an example for measuring the correlation. Uh, in this example, it says use the above system to measure the correlation, the autocorrelation of x of t, okay, given as a cosine omega naught t plus theta, where a and omega naught are just constant and theta is a random variable. Okay, so basically if you go through the block, the output at 2t, like we have seen in the previous slide, equal to the integral of the incoming signal, okay, a cosine, times a shifted version, a cosine omega naught plus tau. So a times a give you a squared. Now, <clears throat> how do we simplify uh, a product of two cosines? We use a trigonometric, it's, uh, it will give you half cosine the sum, cosine the difference. So we are here now. The half multiplied by 1 over 2t give you uh, 4t in the denominator, and we got the following expression. Now, if we execute the integration, this term has no t, so it will go outside the integration. And the integral of from minus t to t dt give you 2t. And that term is going to be simplified to uh, the following expression. For the integration of the second part, we got this red expression. The reason I have colored these into different colors is that we know, already know, we have seen this example before, we have done the correlation for this random process, and it turns out to be this expression. So when we use one sample to execute, we use a time averaging, we got another expression. This is the, the error part, and this is why I colored this with red, and I call it epsilon. Now let's examine this uh, colored part, and if somebody says, for example, we would like to have an error, the error to be less than 20 times less than the largest value of the true correlation. So this statement, 
is the following expression. We want the error, the magnitude of the error, to be less than 20%, which is equivalent to 0 0.0, uh, 20 times less, which means, uh, sorry, 20 times less, which means 0.05, 5% of the largest value of the correction. Largest value occurs at tau equal to zero. Now, I'll just substitute the magnitude of the error. If you, if you take the magnitude, the sine and cosine have a maximum of one. You got the following. So what remains is A oh, squared over 2 times 2 omega t. We got this. And if you substitute tau equal to 0 here in the green expression, you get cosine of 0 is 1, so you get A squared. Simplifying, A squared cancel with A squared, and the 2 with the 4 becomes 2. And finally, we get this expression. And solving for t, it's going to be 10 over omega naught. Okay. Which means, if you wait for longer time, more than 10 over the frequency of the signal because the time is is relative to the frequency of the signal so wait enough time relative to the how fast your signal and you get less error the more time you wait the less the error in measuring the correlation assuming ergodicity so in the following i'm plotting the example i'm trying to simulate the example that we had just before we found, uh, we were found for that specific example, the condition for having good measurement is that capital T should be greater than or equal to 10 over omega naught. I picked the first example where T equal to 20 and omega naught equal to 0.2. Uh, definitely this uh, inequality is not satisfied. If you substitute for omega and T, you get 20. It's not greater than or equal to 50. So you expect to get some errors. Uh, the blue curve here is the exact autocorrelation the green one is the measured and the the red curve shows you the expression for the error we have calculated in the previous example now I said let me increase the period so I went from 20 to 50 which is just barely the limit where 50 will equal to 50 will just satisfy the condition you can see that our error is now less than 5% and the exact and measured curves are uh, almost the same the error becomes small I'm just showing the period from minus 40 to plus 40. If you run the code again, you might get different results because we are generating a random phase, but the concept will remain the same. Now let's conclude this part with a practice example. A random process x of t is known to be white sense stationary with the expected value of x squared equal to 11. Give reasons why the following expressions cannot be the autocorrelation function of this specific process. So the first expression is this. Okay, the autocorrelation is sine 2 tau over 1 plus tau squared. This is not a valid autocorrelation for the previous uh, random process. You can give f three different reasons. Please write them down. And um, once you're done, look at the second example, example B. And why, at least give one reason why this is not a valid correlation function for the given uh, for the given random process please share your answer in the comment section thank you very much